After seeing the structure of the heart from the outside, it's time to see a vertical section of the human heart. That means that the heart is cut vertically so we can see the inside. So this is, as we said previously, the aorta, the big artery that supplies the cells of the body with oxygenated blood from the heart. And we said that the heart has four chambers. This is the right atrium. This is the right ventricle. It is important to notice that these are right and not left because here the heart is inverted. The heart always points left from downwards. And here we have the left atrium and the left ventricle. The right parts and the left parts of the heart do not meet. The blood that goes into the right part does not mix with the blood that goes into the left part because both parts are separated by a septum. The right and left atrium or ventricle do not meet. We also said that we have the vena cava. We actually have two vena cavas. We have the superior vena cava that collects deoxygenated blood from the organs of the body and takes it to the heart. The superior vena cava takes blood from organs above the heart, such as the head. We also have the inferior vena cava that takes deoxygenated blood from organs lower than the heart to the heart, such as, for example, the legs. We also saw the pulmonary artery that takes deoxygenated blood from the heart to the lungs in order to get oxygenated. And we have the pulmonary vein that takes back oxygenated blood from the lungs back to the heart. And here we have a valve, which is like a gate or a door between the left atrium and the left ventricle. It's called a bicuspid valve. We also have a valve between the right atrium and the right ventricle. This one is called tricuspid valves. So we have the bicuspid valve and we have the tricuspid valves that separate the left atrium from the left ventricle and the right atrium from the right ventricle, respectively. Also, we have other valves called semilunar valves, which separate the right ventricle from the aorta. So now, this is how blood will move in the body. Let's start with oxygenated blood coming from the lung. It is going to come to the heart through the pulmonary vein. The pulmonary vein is going to take this blood to the left atrium. The bicuspid valve is closed. When the left atrium is filled with blood, the muscles will contract. So this pressure will cause the bicuspid valve to open. And so this oxygenated blood will go from the left atrium to the left ventricle. So now the oxygenated blood is in the ventricle. We need to take it to the organs of the body. So what happens is that the left ventricle will contract, the bicuspid valve will close so that the pressure of the contraction of the left ventricle does not push the blood back into the atrium. Instead, the pressure will push the blood into the aorta through the semilunar valve. The pressure will cause the semilunar valve to open. Blood will go through the aorta to the body organs and the body organs will be supplied with oxygenated blood. Now, by diffusion, oxygen will go from the blood to the organs and carbon dioxide will go from the organs to the blood. So the blood is now deoxygenated. It will return to the heart through the vena cava, through the superior and the inferior vena cava. Both will take this deoxygenated blood to the right atrium of the heart. So the right atrium of the heart fills with deoxygenated blood and the tricuspid valve at this point is closed. So for this blood to pass through the tricuspid valve, we need the right atrium to contract. So the right atrium contracts, the tricuspid valve opens, blood is now in the right ventricle, and then the right ventricle contracts, the semilunar valve is open, and this blood is able to pass through the pulmonary artery to the lungs, where it will undergo gas exchange, the carbon dioxide will diffuse from the blood to the lungs and oxygen will diffuse from the lungs to the blood. Now this blood is oxygenated again and it will return to the heart through the pulmonary vein and the cycle starts again.